Hey guys, so today we're gonna be doing an install with the BC Racing uh, BR series coilovers. Um, currently right now the Corolla is on RSR Super Downs. <sighs> Trying to get a little bit lower, as you can tell from the video, the wheels aren't really all that pretty, even with the RSR Super Downs on there. Um, it gives you usually about a two inch drop, give or take, on the fronts and on the rears. But since this will be a show car, we're gonna try and do something where we can get the fitment just a little bit better. Hopefully the extreme low configuration on the BC coolovers will help us get there. Um, I'll show you a couple points on the video um, with installing, I guess the correct way to do it or according to the instructions. Um, with the newer Corolla's 2019 and up, um, there's no hole on the strut towers where you can actually adjust the damper so we're gonna have to drill a hole there um it's just me today so i don't really have anybody that can hold the camera while i'm filming so i'll try and pause throughout some of the drilling that i'm doing to kind of show you where i'm going to be putting the hole to have the adjustable dampers on there because it's going to take a few trial and error runs of getting everything on there getting the fitment dialed in to see what's the best outcome we can get with the quality of ride with it being lowered it's going to be pretty miserable driving either way but that's just what you do when you go static so um yeah i'll keep you updated and let you guys know exactly kind of like what we're looking at um i'll do a brief unboxing of uh this bad boy here to show you exactly what you're going to get um show you some of the instructions on what they say to exactly do on um drilling the holes all right, so after unboxing everything, um, there's a couple things that you get. Uh, I mentioned earlier about drilling the strut tower brace. So these come with um, an adjustable damper. It has 30 clicks to adjust like your overall ride quality. So if you're doing like, um, it, well, if you're, if you're driving and it feels like it's a little stiff, rough, too soft, that's how you actually dial it in. Um, but with Toyota, when they designed these cars, um, your strut tower, is sealed so you'll have obviously your three mounting points for the strut itself but there's no hole that you can really use in order to adjust the actual damper so without making this hole that you have to drill right here which is roughly about i want to say maybe quarter inch to half inch that you're gonna have to make you'll have to take your strut holes out every single time you want to adjust your damper and we're not going to do that so we're going to make a hole so that way as we're test driving the car to see how the ride quality feels. Um, we can just pop the hood, adjust the damper, set it, and then be on our way. A um, couple of things that they give you, they're gonna give you your product number with your serial number, let you know exactly what you purchased. Two stickers that you can choose to place anywhere on your vehicle if you show well choose, or if you wanna slap it on your toolbox or just throw them away, whatever you wanna do with them. A um, Couple other um, instructions that they'll give you. Um, in the box, you have obviously your coal over set. Uh, they're gonna give you two new sway bar links. I believe these are gonna be a little bit lower than the factory ones. You're definitely gonna make sure that you install these so everything lines up correctly. Um, you're gonna get your two front coilovers. Um, they already con are configured to the extreme low setup. I'm sure I'm gonna have to dial in a little bit because as you can tell here, it's already almost maxed out with how low these things can go. <laughs> um, when you're adjusting your coilovers, if this is the first time you're ever doing it, do not adjust this at all. BC Racing configures this specifically to your vehicle when you buy these to already have the preload set so you don't have to touch these at all. If you wanna lower your vehicle, you do not adjust these because this will not get you the, the desired lower uh, look that you want. The only thing that you're gonna wanna touch, obviously, is this puppy right here. This is your lower lock collar to the bottom brace. You'll loosen this up. I believe this may be on a ball bearing um, top mount. So in a perfect world, instead of having to actually disconnect um, the bottom of your strut from your knuckle every single time to adjust the height, some some that don't have a ball bearing top hat or top mount, you have to un unseat this from the knuckle. You'll spin the shaft after you loosen the locking collar and then that's how you would end up getting it higher or lower. With the ball bearing set up, all you gotta do is loosen this lock and collar. And in theory, this whole piece right here, this whole assembly will turn. Don't touch this. 
loosen this if you want to go lower. Don't touch this at all. All right, so hopefully the compressor in the back guard isn't too loud. Um, so for the top, I meant to get it before I rose the car up in the air. You have to take off the two wiper blades. The nuts are 14 inch bolt or nuts. Just take them off, pull the blades off, and you're gonna have your cowl. You're gonna have four pins here, there, uh, right behind that cable there, and there. Once you pull all four pins off, you're gonna wanna pull from the corners. There's a seal that goes into that weather stripping or all the way at the end. Uh, you'll pull that out, that'll give you access to the top plates up here, where the top mounts are. Um, after that, you get your car in the air, take the wheel off. Um, I'm already starting to kind of get ahead of myself here. Um, you're going to have a, uh, I believe it was a 14 inch bolt here for your sway bar link. Uh, 24 uh, millimeter socket here, here. Remove those two bolts. Make sure that you disconnect your ABS wire, which is gonna be a 14 millimeter bolt somewhere. Where is it? Uh, right here. You're gonna have a 10 millimeter bolt right back here. That's gonna pull out your low speed sensor. Make sure you disconnect this before you pull any of this assembly off. Because once you take this bolt out, if it shifts, it puts a lot of tension on this wire, you're gonna snap your bolt and then you're gonna to have to try and repair it. And that is not a fun job because as you can see, it goes all the way up in here, all the way behind the wheel well into the chassis. So just to save yourself a whole bunch of headache, make sure you disconnect that first. And then uh, we're gonna get ready and disassemble this. I'm just gonna re release the three bolts up here, which I believe are 14 millimeters as well. And then we'll pull the shock out, or strut, Jesus. <laughs> and then um, we'll mount the new one in and I'll give you an update there. All right, so we got the front left uh, strut out, um, as you can tell from the image. It's already uh, configured to a pretty low drop. Um, I'm gonna see if this is gonna be like a just put in, drop it, see how it sits type of setup. Maybe I'm I'll get lucky. And you've already got it measured out correctly. Um, it does seem like it's on a ball bearing pivot, so I won't have to disconnect this every time I need to lower it to adjust it. If... All right, so quick update. Uh, sorry, if the compressor's still kicking in. It's pretty loud. Um, both front coilovers are in. Uh, clearances are really fucking open in there now <laughs> compared to the old ones. Uh, new sway bar links are in as well. Uh, what I'd highly recommend is when you're taking these out, um, it's gonna be really hard getting a Allen key in on the other side. So on the old ones, I took a uh, pair of vice grips, got in between here to grab onto the backing piece. So I could grab onto that and just hit that with a, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a 17 millimeter for the old nut. The new nuts are a 19 millimeter that's on there. Um, once you take both sides off, you can actually swing the whole sway bar up to give you the clearance to get back in there to use an Allen key to hold the metal piece in place to tighten that nut back down, which is a 19. Um, overall, I mean, it already looks like it's sitting higher up to the uh, fender versus the old suspension. For the top section, um, it's going to be a real pain in the rear trying to get the dampening or um, not dampening, Jesus. The camera set up correctly because you have to take the strut out every single time to get your camber dialed in and the way you want it. So the way I did it here, again, not pretty at all, but from the instructions, pretty much what they tell you is to take a drill bit, make a hole, make sure that the, um, if you can see it through this video, make sure that you can line up to where that uh, top mount bolt is there. Cause that's where you're gonna have to slide down the adjustment tool for your dampener uh, set up. Um, eventually what I'll probably try and do is I'm gonna cut this whole top piece off, just say, forget it, <laughs> and uh, have access to everything in there in case I ever have to change the camber on there, which is gonna be very soon. Um, other side, I didn't have to drill as much. Uh, that hole was actually perfect. I'm gonna tidy it up so that piece right there is not sticking out and doesn't cut my hand wide open one day when I go to adjust it. But um, once the cow's back on top, I'm pretty sure I'll have to make some sort of access hole because the cowl here, if you're looking at it, there's no way to really separate this part from the strut, I mean, from this brace to access the strut tower. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to make a hole. I'm gonna have to really gauge that out to make it look kind of pretty when I do it, only because I think the hood, once it's closed, it's gonna end up showing that hole. Um, other than that, the, the fronts went in fairly easily. Um, no real big issues there. The rears I'm gonna jump onto next. 
All right, so one thing to note on the rears when you're taking everything apart, um, this is a 14, this guy's a 17, and those two up top are 17s. Now, when you get to take this off, um, if you loosen this bolt, you wanna make sure that you have some type, if you're using a lift, you wanna have some type of brace up against this to hold it in place when you go to pull this bolt out. Um, Cause if you don't, what's gonna happen? This spring is still compressed, even though it's a lowering spring. Um, if you somehow manage to get this out with this still on there, it's going to shoot out and might cause some pretty hefty damage. Um, I'm going to lower the lift down because I don't have one. I'm going to use this jack stand here to support the lower control arm. So that way, when I go to take this bolt out, I'm not going to injure myself or injure the car or do something here. Um, now, one other thing to point out, when I put on the RSR Super Downs, when I took this bolt out, um, it did kind of thread real badly going back in. We were able to save it. What I would highly recommend, just so you don't run into the problem I did before and try and save the bolt, is um, you can go to Toyota, get yourself two more um, control arm bolts. They're like $3 and change, um, if not maybe a little bit more, just in case, so you don't end up getting stuck once you take these bolts off. Because if you destroy those bolts and the threads are gone, your car will be immobile and you're gonna have to try and figure out how to get down to a parts store to get everything taken care of. So, try to be a little proactive, hopefully to save me in the long run and I don't damage those new bolts going in. And then um, I'll keep you updated on the progress. All right, so another update. Um, I went ahead and took care of the rear. Uh, it was just a little bit more um, involved than the front, so I didn't really have a chance to go through like the, the full video of how i want to show you guys how everything comes apart on the back um it's it's fairly self-explanatory earlier um once you remove those two 17s for the top mount there's gonna be a 22 millimeter for the bottom shock um once you get that out you'll slide your um shock out the 14 millimeter on the control arm on the bottom has a 17 millimeter bolt or nut on the opposite side. Once you take that off, that'll release your spring. You can pull that out. Um, right now, currently, she's setting pretty well. Um, this is the current height at the moment. Um, as you can tell here, and then again in the rear, don't mind the two body panel dents. I just found out about those like a few days ago. Not too happy about them, but what can you do? Um, it'll probably settle another five to 10 millimeters. I'm gonna ride it for the next couple of days to let the springs fully seat before I start making any major adjustments to the coilovers. That way, when I go to adjust them to the wheels that I have on there now, um, I can pretty much dial it in without having to adjust again a third time after the springs settle fully. Um, overall, I'm really happy with the quality of the ride. I took it for a brief lap around. It's a little bit bouncier, but it's still stiff. Um, I got the dampening settings dialed in for the most part. Might toy with those over the next couple of days. Um, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much everything that wraps up this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Try not to kill my car too much on the um, on the wrap job or whatever opinions you may have. Um, other than that, I mean, just stay tuned. We'll be in touch.